Because we know people who should be successful, but what? They're not successful. Why? So that's his why buy. But what is he afraid of? My personal style of education, but still entertain them, bring them along with stories, right? You can't wait to tell your colleague. You can't wait to go to work and tell somebody. And you're like, oh my God, I can't wait. So what happened? You haven't seen my TV show, you should get cable. That's what we need to do. From doing a TV show to doing corporate events, I've been so lucky to connect with many passionate entrepreneurs worldwide. What I've learned from a business perspective, because this is the formula for success, no matter who you talk to, attitude will drive your behavior. Would you agree? and your behavior will drive your consequences every single time. Right, we got the concept. Okay, we got the concept. We got, we got the equipment, right? We got the brand, you guys got that. And then again, we got the content that we create. That's the easy part. This is the big one, the big C, which is a commitment. What should you do? That's right, all right. 10 Xers, do not fail me. True test, here it comes. There's skill, and then there's will. Listen to what I'm saying. There is skill, and then there is will. And here's the interesting thing. I know a lot of people who have a lot of skill, but have no what? Will, right? You ever look at somebody who's successful, and you say, why them, why not you? Yes, okay, that's me too. You have more control, but your costs are also gonna be what? Higher. Now, here's where some of the magic is starting to kick in. You can talk to any CEO in the B2B business, any CEO. You walk into his office and they only care about three things. People too. Yeah, he with the suit, put it up. There you go. I hope you can see this. I'll try to draw big. Let's pretend for a moment that I had seven territories. You remember I wrote that out? Yes or no? Boom, territory two, territory three, all the way to territory number one, seven. So now I've segmented my market. So content is going to start being created by machines. And I'm telling you right now that those people, you guys, the content creators that connect with people are the ones that are going to win. Some people think, well, it won't work for my industry. Really? It'll work for any industry. Trust me. The majority of the time when we're looking to fix something, repair something, or learn something, where do we go? YouTube. We don't even want to read anymore. We go to YouTube. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. When you're doing your thing, beautiful things begin to happen. It's like the law of attraction kicks in. You know what I mean? It's almost like you're in line with the universe. Everything works. And when you do your thing, everybody gets an automatic MBA, which stands for what? Mega bank account money. Are you with me? So we don't want to do a thing. We want to do a what? Beautiful. Put it all together for Victor Antonio. Here we go. All right, there we go. I'm not here to mess around. You ready to learn? Yes or no? That's how it works in today's market. Whether it's B2B or B2C, you see the similar pattern. Matters. Oh, how do you just, you know, in other words, say you've got to start doing these things, pushing them, but also encouraging them. Oh, look at this. This is where it gets, dude, this is, this is like so interactive with audiences, man. Can you imagine this with your customers? Check this out. Now, what does all this have to do with selling? It has everything to do with selling. Welcome to another episode of Sales After Dark, where money never sleeps. This is episode 99, on track to 100 on Sunday. 
I got some cool things planned for Sunday's 100th episode, so I hope you'll be there. Uh, by the way, uh, the description, I forgot to change the description uh, when I launched. I got, a, I got busy on a phone call. So today we're going to talk about emails and some interesting data. Uh, I know somebody asked me about retention. We're going to talk about that in the next one or right after. 101 will probably be retention. But anyway, thank you for joining me. If you're watching this on a replay, fast forward five minutes because I'm going to say hi to my friends first. And then I'm going to jump into some content. We're going to talk about emails today. And then we'll take some questions and answers after this. And so again, man, I'm super excited. Episode 99, man. And so let me take some comments here. Right off the bat, Melissa Campbell is in the house. Oh yeah, here we go, Melissa. Thank you for joining us, Melissa. I uh, appreciate you. My girl, Mia Knox, West Coast in the house. Appreciate you being here, Mia. Arvin, what is happening from Mumbai? I just love saying that part, man. So thank you for being here, Arvin. My man, TJ, what's happening? Rainy Morty here in, is this, do you say Cebu or Cebu? Philippines, but still good day, Master VA. Uh, to the rest of the SAD peeps, man. Thank you, man, TJ, for being here. Jada Beats, man, what's happening? Hey, Victor, how are you today? It's a beautiful day on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. I'm enjoying the content on videos, sales. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. And my LinkedIn user, tonight we're going to party like it's episode 99. That's really good, by the way. That's really good. I like that. I like that. Jared, sales trainer, Awesome dude on LinkedIn, bets. Man, like I said, we're going to talk about email. I should have changed the topic, so I hope you won't be too disappointed. Uh, Melissa says, I'm near Niagara Falls, and we finally got enough shit snow to shovel today. I mean, is that something you're happy about? I mean, Melissa, is that something you're happy about? But, yeah, Niagara Falls, beautiful area up there, man. Beautiful area. Shrewd Tesh, my man says, Sir Victor, we love you, man. Thank you back. Thank you back, man. I appreciate that. I started with you on episode one, Sales After Dark. My man. Back in May, by the way. And now we're going to 100. We always with you. Thanks for all the learning, man. Thank you, man, for being here, man. I appreciate you guys. I really do. I, this is a big one. It's one before the 100, man. We're getting there. So again, Sunday is episode 100. Uh, I'm working with Chris Stone. We got some cool stuff planned. I think you're going to enjoy episode 100. I'm going to try to make it as fun as possible. So... Come to have fun. Also, TJ, uh-oh, internet's crawling. Hate it when it rains. It affects internet here in the Philippines like crazy. Ooh, I got a story for you that I may share on Sunday about internet. Uh, Campbell, Sawant, man, 99. Lot to learn in sales, man. You got it. Luis, or Luis Adney. Good evening, sir. Right back at you, Luis. Uh, journey's end. I dig that name, man. Did I just miss the show? Dude, we've just begun. I'm just saying hi before I actually jump into the content. Darius, let me help you phonetically sound out my name. Reeves says, what's up? Que pasa? What's happening? Thank you for being here. Sergio, or as he would probably want to be called, Sergio Perez. Victor, as always, wish you the best. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Spencer Riley, my neighbor down the street, probably. Spencer, thank you for being here, man. Journey's Edge. Oh, thank God. I actually got one. <laughs> My man, Brian Gator Morel from Las Vegas, the Strip. Man, Jorge, Jorge Monterrey. Don't you love when they roll those double R's? Jorge Monterrey. I love that, man. Brian Anderson Payne, dude. It has been a long time. B-A-P, the BAP's in the house, man. So thank you. Uh, Pete Primo, uh, do your thing. I almost said 100. You, I'm almost there, brother. I'm almost there, man. Kenry, what's happening? Happy Hanukkah, Master VA. Ready to learn something new from the Master. Thank you very much for being here. Guys, say hi to each other. Michelle, very much. Good morning, sir. Uh, from India, what's next after sales after dark? I remember your commitment was for 100 episodes. You are right. Uh, correct me if I missed anything about it. No, it is 100. So Sunday will be 100. And so, again, got some stuff planned for episode 100. I hope you'll join us, man. And so commitment. And by the way, you guys kept me on this whole commitment thing. Because, you know, when you say it out loud and you tell people you're going to do 100, it's like, you better do 100. And I got to say, 100's a lot if you really think about it. It's a lot. So anyway, uh, Crystal, oh, man, it's Crystal with the Prince reference and the inability to clear LinkedIn preferences. Oh, man, work it out, brother. Work it out. Jorge Monterrey, the consultant. Shai Suarez from Chicago. Happy to join for Numero 99. Great investment of time. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And the assassin himself, man. Hey, Victor, I'm going to open my oldest bottle of wine for the 100th. Yeah, yeah. Might have a bottle of champagne right here just for that 100, man, on Sunday, man. So Paul Hart says, what's up from Denver? Paul, what's happening from Atlanta here, man? 
99. What are you doing for 100? I can't tell you, Jarrett. Got to be here on Sunday for some of that. Chris Castillo. Hi, this is my first time. Welcome to the Sales After Dark, man. I appreciate you being here. Episode 99. And we got Ruben on station from McAllen, Texas, man. Ruben, thank you for being here. All right. So I want to share, today's going to be a short episode. I came across an article, and again, uh, what I'll do is I'll go back on YouTube and LinkedIn and put all the information below. Again, I was on an important call, and I just had to jump on the stream. I didn't get a chance to kind of update the description. So forgive me for that, but I'll have the link and everything. So I came across an article that I, th I wanted to share with you because I, I thought this was interesting data. And I mentioned some of this in my last episode on Tuesday. So after you watch this episode... Watch the last one that we just did on Tuesday because that one had some great content and this is kind of tie-down content to that. It's almost like a part two of it, but I want to show you some data. This was the article, the science behind, let's do a little zoom in here. It's the science behind, you know, open rates and how to get more people to read your emails. I'm going to show you this link. By the way, you can Google or search it, but I'm going to put the link below and the data here is incredible. It's going to give you some insights into basically how to get people to open your emails more often. So let's jump into it. I got about six slides, all data, going through it. You know me. I like to go through it quick. Not a lot of fluff. Here we go. The first one I thought was interesting. Look at this benchmark. So basically, you can just tell that open rates have been, it's kind of interesting. You know, you, you get this rise in open rates, this dip here, right? And then you get this rise again, and we now see them going down again. But nonetheless, you got open rates a little bit above 20%. You know, so my question to you is, you know, are you experienced that type of open rate? Have you measured your, your email open rate? If you have, can you share some numbers in the chat? I'd like to know what your open rates are. So let's begin with that one. I mean, 20% open rate, you know, I'll take that any day. I don't think mine is that high. If I look at my open rate, I think it's like 16%. So I'd love to see some of your numbers on that as well. Let me go to the second slide. Like I said, I'm just sharing data with you. Uh, it also varies by country. This was interesting. This is really interesting. So for example, let me go full screen here. Again, so you can see it. And North America, where we're at, is about 19. And I think, again, I'm at about 16%, something like that. 16 to 19% depends on what I send out. But notice the click-through rates on this one. You know, that's 3%. Click-through rate. And I don't know if my click-through rate is that high. I think it's closer to 2% than it is. So love to see what some of your numbers are. If you're in Asia, I mean, you're looking at 18%. Europe has a high click-through rate. And Oceania. But what I find interesting about the Europe one, one of the reasons I think it's higher is because of, uh, you know, the rules they've passed in the UK, in Europe, with regard to emails and, and spamming people. And so I think maybe people get emails, they realize it's from a legitimate source, which is why they may open those more. So interesting data. This is the one that I talked about Tuesday. Now I wanted to show you the data behind it because this kind of blew me away. And what I talked about on Tuesday was this right here, that the open rates, look at that. The majority of people, 81%, view their emails on the mobile. Which is, again, we, in the last one we talked about, where do you use video? And one of the things we talked about is, what type of video should you be actually attaching? Should you do landscape or should you do vertical? Well, if the majority of people are reading their email on the mobile, then you want to go vertical because I think it'll be more comfortable for them. Again, I'm not saying landscaping isn't good, but let's go full screen. But look at the change. From 2011, 2016, I mean, look at these numbers. They've just been increasing. Which means, and we've known this for at least a few years, that mobile is your first screen. That has flipped. So I think that's a fascinating stat right there. Uh, mind blower right there. A couple more slides. This one was interesting. Open rates by day of the week. Basically, you're not seeing a lot of difference. Uh, Jared says his open rates on messages to connections on LinkedIn is about 35%. Mind blower. One of the things that Jared turned me on to was using videos on your LinkedIn messages to increase open rate. Jared, add some more flavor to why you're getting 35% and share it with the, with the fans here, with the tribe. So basically, when I look at these numbers, it kind of really doesn't matter. I mean, I would just probably nix these two, but I'm surprised that, I mean, this one surprised me, 17%. 
because I don't know if you're like me, but you know, Sunday before I kick it into Monday, I call Sunday Monday Eve. So Monday Eve, which is Sunday night, I like to check my emails to kind of clear out as much as I can before I start the actual work day on Monday. So I was surprised that that number wasn't higher. I thought it would be higher. So that's surprising to me. So that's really surprising to me. Two more slides. This is interesting. What time should you send your emails? Well, there it is. Peak time, around three, maybe even like 12. So maybe you have this band of time from nine to 12, but it seems like the perfect band of time to send. One could probably even include that, but that's too much of a gap there. So worst case from 12 to six, but it seems like the peak time when people open is 3 p.m. Is that surprising to you? Uh, Jared says, uh, if you read the chat, he says, it's my first message with the video. It's not a pitch and it's, a, it's super personal. I start the video by saying their name, which is a perfect segue into one of these slides I have coming up. Reasons for people opening. How perfect was that, Jared? That was perfectly timed, by the way. So in other words, reason for opening is that when they see somebody's name in the actual email, they're more likely to open it. Then subject line comes in second, offer comes in third, an intro paragraph, I don't know if it gives you a preview of the intro paragraph, but that's fourth. But I thought this was interesting, including the person's name in the actual email increases the actual open rate. I think the last one I have here is open rate by the number of words in the subject line. In other words, what's in the subject line? Real simple, man, six to 10 words is a sweet spot right here, right? So if you can have the person's name and six to 10 words in the subject line with keywords, that seems to be the mix. That seems to be what people are looking for in order to open something. So I thought this was interesting. So zero to five, I would have placed money here. That's why I would have placed my bet and I would have been totally wrong. What do you guys think of that? Does that make sense to you guys? Does that make sense? Oh, by the way, I got a new camera I want to show you. I want to see if this works. You get to see this view now. That's my studio right there. This is the whole studio. Now you can really see the whole studio and what I'm looking at. And you can actually see your streams right here on the TV. That's what I'm looking at right now. So as I'm talking to you guys, this is kind of the whole setup. So I thought I'd add this view just for you guys. So you guys can see what's happening in the background right there. Uh, so the top five takeaways. Again, I told you it was going to be a short sales after dark very quick. Top five takeaways. Use six to 10 words in the subject lines to get the, be to get the best open rates. Number two, send your email campaigns during the workday and after lunch. Again, that three o'clock spot seems to be real. Personalize the subject line with the reader's name. Use a recognizable sender's name. By that they mean is that when people recognize the name, obviously they're more likely to open it. And last but not least, optimize your email campaigns for mobile. That means if they're looking at it on their mobile, they don't wanna read long form text. They want to read short form text and also they want the actual video to be vertical. And that is it for this Sales After Dark. Like I said, it was going to be a short one today. I just wanted to give you this data and let me know what you think and I'll take any questions. And if you don't have any questions, uh, then I'm going to jump off this. And by the way, somebody put it in here and thank you for highlighting it because I was having a brain uh, schism and I think it's right here. The GDPR has reduced the amount of email spam. That's the phrase. Right. Right, this I was looking for, the GDPR. So because of that, I think you have higher open rates in Europe. Uh, Europe is way ahead of the U.S. when it comes to, you know, data security and privacy. Uh, they've gone to anonymized data way back when and many years ago. And so they're way ahead of it. So we still need to catch up to Europe. So kudos, hat tip. Let me see if I missed any comments here. I think I got most of it here. Uh... Well, let me look at some of the percentages. You guys are seeing these, right? On YouTube, I am known as Ova Ministry. Got you, Ruben. Got you. Uh, let me see. On Sid Hill, let me see. WhatsApp, browser note. I like emails, SMS, WhatsApp, and browser notifications. I love that. Uh, hello from New Zealand. Finding the why and how people buy. Joey, thank you, man, for joining us. Jared says, open rates. That's, again, he said 35%, which I think is incredible. Ruben. Lowing is in 21 to 22%. Well done, man. Well, well done, man. Uh, on advertising, 10% approximately, said he says, on education content, 
20 to 30 percent. You guys are killing it, man. Uh, I'll skip the hellos you guys are saying to each other. Uh, Joseph James is back in the house, man. Thank you for being here. Uh, good to hear. Let me just go through this. Ruben had this. We talked to GDPR. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. And then Jared said this. Yeah, the first message, it's not a pitch. I can't tell you. I don't know why people do this. Everybody wants a 10 to 15 minute chat with me. Do you guys get that? You know, they connect with you and they immediately want to talk about the 10 to 15, they want 10 to 15 minutes to talk about how they can cooperate, what type of synergies, how we can work together, mutually beneficial operations or cooperation. You're like, come on. You know, it's like lazy emailing. Remember one of the uh, sales after darks I talked about, uh, I call them LinkedIn loonies because they're crazy to expect somebody to just say, yeah, let's just jump on the call for five minutes or 10 minutes without really understanding why. Justin Reuter, Hank, yeah, I think, long time watcher, first time commenter. I love that line, man. Love the content. Going to miss your live stuff. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to reduce I'm, I'm going to reduce the frequency, Justin. Though I haven't been able to catch it live till this one. Please don't leave us. Please. I'm not going anywhere, brother. I'm not going anywhere. Stop begging, man. But I'm not going anywhere. Thank you, Justin. That's very kind of you, man. Thank you very much. Chandra, what do you got, man? I want the setup same. Want to see this since you started Sales After Dark. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, it's interesting to go back to the first who Chris Stone and I were talking about this as we're thinking about ideas for our Sunday show, the 100th episode, is that when you go back, Chandra, and you see the, um, the first, like, I don't know, the first 10 I did, they weren't bad, but they weren't great either. You see the actual evolution of the actual show, like even the equipment has changed, all the different things. I've even added like little cameras like this. You guys have seen some of these cameras. That's the low camera. I did this camera so you guys can see what's on the desk camera. And so I'm still trying to figure out how to kind of really, you know, even like this new this camera angle right here is a new angle. That's a new angle right there because I thought it'd be cool. And so Chris walked me through setting that up as well. So I appreciate that. But I mean, it, it's just a process, right? And I, don't, I think I showed you guys all the equipment I've purchased that didn't work. I got equipment that didn't work, you know. And so it's a process. You can do it, Chandra. You can do it, man. I know you can. Uh, sneak peek backstage. Thanks. Now we're all buying three ring lights. Everybody get three ring lights. There's perfect, right? Three ring lights. It really is ideal when you think about it, man. It's like you can only see two right here, but there's one right there that you cannot see. But here, and by the way, I can probably give you a better tour of this now. So you can see, by the way, there's a lot of junk on the side over here, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. So when I want to do a green screen, I have this whole wall. See, that's a whole green screen wall right there. And so what I can do is take my camera that's right here, the one above the TV, and I can point it towards the green screen. And if I want to use a white screen, a white background, I'll just remove that board. That's my cheat board right there. That white board is what I use to cheat when I write on the actual smart board. And so anyway... That's it, right? So it's kind of cool. Anyway, it's a nice camera to add, man. So like I said, hope you guys enjoy the backstage pass. Uh, Paul, thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate that. Uh, these live shows are great. I made sure to share on my Facebook. Hopefully more peeps rolling. Uh, it's like 900 sub channels, man. Thank you very much, man. If you got 900 subs, maybe we can get one or two, man. It all helps. It all adds up. Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate that, man. Manny Madrid, Eminem is in the house. As Jeb Blunt says, the most beautiful word to a person is their name. Use their name and be direct and specific. Uh, by the way, uh, Jeb Blunt said it, but I think the guy that said it was the guy that wrote uh, How to Influence in Friends. Well, who's the guy that wrote How to Influence Friends? Uh, he wrote it like, I don't know, like 67 years ago. Help me out, guys. Dale Carnegie, one of those guys. That's who said it, but big shout out to my man Jeb Blunt over at Sales Gravy. Uh, Jeb Blunt is the guy that uh, him and Anthony and Areno put together the Outbound Conference. So if you go to outboundconference.com, uh, the goal is to try to have it this year again. I'll be speaking again as an invited guest speaker. Always enjoy being with those guys. And so we're hoping it can do, we can do it live. Uh, it might be a blend of live slash, you know, virtual. We'll see what happens. But again, big shout out to those two guys, man. They're great dudes. Uh, we got Rod. 10 still seems too wordy for a subject. Any studies about the actual hot words other than name? Uh, no. I, I know the words that'll get you spammed up. And the guys over at the UK know, in Europe know this, right? Use words free, offer. Those get thrown right into the spam mail. So I'm sure if you Google it, you'll be able to find something rot. So uh, Jorge says, awesome presentation. It was short and sweet, Jorge. Uh, sometimes you just want to show data and there's nothing else to say. Uh LinkedIn loonies, man. Yeah, there's a lot of those, man. I, I like that. 
Lewis, what you got for me, Matt? Am I missing something here? Yes, you. the video title stated using videos in your sales process for buyer engagement. Lewis, what happened was I was on a call. It was one of those important calls and I didn't get a chance to update the description. That video you're looking for was actually Tuesdays. So episode 98 is what you should be looking at. So I do apologize for that. Uh, it was, I just ran out of time, man. Sorry. I'm only human, Lewis. I'm only human, man. On subject, place a dollar or symbol. I think you do that to fast ID on your emails. Works for me. If it works for you, then it works for you. Uh, I think in some cases you might get you got me, might get spam filtered, man. Uh, love it, man. All right. Wow. I wish I could have had this kind of setup. It's It takes a while, man. The, the vibe board is beast, man. The vibe board is just... This has been... Uh, this is uh, $3,500, right? $3,500. Uh, by the way, promo code Victor Antonio if you want a discount. So the board has been... It's expensive. I'm not saying it's not expensive. $3,500 for the board and the stand. And by the way, I just, I just, it's a red stand. They didn't have a, a, a black one, so that's why I put this little cover thing on there. Uh, but this board has paid for itself many times over. Uh, this, When people see this setup, and Chris and I have talked about this also with Doug Lehman, when people jump on a call with me and they see this setup, it just, it just almost closes the deal because I get a lot of... Calls. I should say get a lot of calls. I get calls. And people say, we want to invite you uh, to be a virtual speaker. Uh, can we set up a time to talk to you? And I say, yes. And I always do the call from in the studio. And then I have some type of beautiful slide right here. And it always blows them away. And it always gives me an edge and increases my close rate. If I can get them on a call and I can get them to watch me on here while we're doing the call, my close rate's above 90%. That's what it's worth. So each deal, for example, each virtual keynote I do is $5,000. I charge $5,000. You guys get me for free. But I charge $5,000 to do a personalized keynote. And one keynote paid for all this. That's what I mean. I got my money back quickly. So, you know, if you're thinking about getting one and you need one, if you want to change it. Again, you saw my board, right? I think I showed you the, you know, I'll use this camera here. I showed you my, if you look here, this is my little webcam. -y. Again, you can use this board right here. Nothing wrong with it. This is a good board. You can use that. Uh, but there's something different about using the vibe board that just kind of, it just makes it stand out more. Uh, I wish I had a camera for my bald spot. <laughs> like right there. I should put one like, wham. I actually thought about, hey Jeff, I thought about putting one like shooting down onto the desk, maybe catch my bald spot once in a while. So I might do it, man. I might do it, man. Uh, you guys are saying hi to each other. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Pete Primo says, Victor, you could do a separate training on how to execute live shows like this, maybe a boot camp format. I I'm going to do it probably in January or February. It's going to be a half day program. And in that half day program, I'm just going to walk you through the baby steps of everything. But not only doing the setup, that'll be one part of it. But the other part is how do you engage in a, because the biggest thing right now, Pete, is, is people are talking about virtual selling. I get that. Very important. Very important. But what's even more important is virtual engagement. That's where people are struggling. How do I engage people? How do I keep them hooked into a conversation? And so I think that is going to be part of the workshop, right? A virtual engagement workshop. So more to come, man. Uh, is the green screen for CGI? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not a green screen. It's a green wall. So you can actually go to like Sherman Williams and say, can I get chroma key green? That's the phrase you want to use, chroma key green. And then you can paint your wall. And so sometimes when I want to put a special effect behind me, Rod, that's what I use. For example, one of my big clients who I have a contract with wanted to do this effect where uh, I'm, I'm riding a bike. They gave me a bike with their logo on it. They actually mailed me a bike. Like this was like a few months ago. They mailed me a bike. Maybe I should show you guys the video one day. Uh, maybe I'll show it on Sunday. They gave me a bike. They mailed it here. I bought a stand, you know, where you can actually ride the bike, but it, stand, it stays, you know, in place. And then I shot like, if I can just, what I did was I pointed the, uh, I pointed the bike in the direction of the green screen. If I can just kind of move that like that. So the bike was like facing that way and I'm riding the bike. Obviously all this is moved out of the way. And what they were able to do is they were able to superimpose all these scenes as I was riding the bike. And then they would show this map, a graphic map of me riding a bike from Atlanta. It would show dots all the way 
to Phoenix, Arizona. It was a cool effect, man. It's a cool effect. It's all about getting creative. Uh, cool. Yeah, man. Let me see. What do you got here? I hope you remember. Uh, love your content. I hope you remember me. Uh, I'm on, nah, no, I don't, but don't take it personal, man. Uh, love your content. Lots of love from India, man. Amar, thank you very much, man. Appreciate you being here. If I don't remember you, like I said, don't take it personal. Maybe if I go to India, I'll high five you and get to know you personally. And then we'll go from there. How's that? Uh, John Matarazzo, my man. Thank you for joining me. Maxwell, Maxwell. Who's Maxwell? Give me some more on that. Uh, Dale Carnegie, it was Dale Carnegie, right? Who wrote that? Uh, the sweetest, the sweetest sound in the world is your name on someone else's lips. I think that's the way it's actually said. So good one. Hola, uh, Ada from, I know from Malaysia, man. Good morning. Sunny Friday morning, man. Uh, Carnegie. So was Carnegie. It was Dale Carnegie. There we go. Confirm, man. Ah, thank you for the update. I'll look for it. Yeah. Sorry about that, Louis. That's my bad. Uh, uh, good for you, Mr. V, to be on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Uh, let me see. My man, Doug Lagerman, who always breaks it down in layman's terms. What's up, Vic? In layman's terms, keep it 100 and keep it moving. Trying to get the 100, Doug. Trying to get the 100. Uh, let me see. Yes, I guess it's the best investment during these times. If Look, if, I'm telling you, it's expensive, but what's the alternative to just have kind of like, you know, I mean, if you don't do that, then you're just going to have, and I'm trying to see if I can pull it up here. You're going to have a basic setup like this. This is what most of the conference is going to look like, right? And it gets very boring. And I think people want dynamic. By the way, you don't have to do this. I'm just saying that what people want is some interactive stuff. And being able to write on the board, be, I mean, I'm telling you, it's a game changer. I think until you experience production with a smart board, you don't understand. And if you're going after large corporate clients, easy decision to make the investment. So uh, thank you for the for your existence. My man, I love it. Existence and presence. I love it, man. Thank you. Eminem, what do you got? We would love to have you use your new setup to run a training for our sales team. Thank you for all you do. Manny, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Tim Alt, uh, these are great. Thank you very much. Joseph James, what do you got? You got to put that beautiful mug of yours on YouTube picture. <laughs> love it, man. Cool. Uh, good for you. Uh, da, da, da. Got it. Awesome. Got it. All right. I'm going to start wrapping up. Is it? I want in for that setup workshop. Yeah. Like I said, I'll, it'll probably be like mid January, end of January. Uh, I'm releasing my book finally, Mastering the Upsell. With that, I'm only going to release it within the actual workshop we're going to do. And it's going to be a workshop from like nine to 12. Uh, by the way, what day would you like a workshop on? What day would you attend a workshop? What do you think is the best day to do a workshop? Uh, my daughter and I, my daughter who does like the marketing side of my stuff, her and I were debating what's the best day. What day do you think is the least intrusive on your working schedule. What day? And it's going to be from 9 to 12. 9 in the morning to 12. Uh, if you're in the U.S., you know, what would be the best day, given those times? Given those times. Cool stuff, Chroma Key Green. You got it, man. Good morning. Uh, Melwin, man, thank you for joining us, man. Appreciate you being here. Your setup is amazing. Jared, thank you, man. Uh, that's my goal, man. You got it, brother. Uh, Victor, do you have any ideas for a, a clogged, for a clogged CRM, like clogged, like it's jammed, like, I don't know what that means. For a clogged CRM, I mean, pipe drive is my go-to, but I don't know what a clogged CRM means, Dean. Help me out, brother. Help me out, man. Uh, I'm getting a new webcam next week, man. Yeah, this is a, this camera I use right here, this is a Brio. So this is the Logitech Brio. This is like a, I think it's 4K. Not four thousand dollars. That's the you know four K. Even though you, it's only going to be like ten eighty, but it's HD, so it's a good camera. And I have this going straight, obviously, into the computer, and it's a nice little easy switch. Uh, Pete says Friday, CRM is a mess. Do you have any ideas on cleaning it quickly, prioritizing, or something? Oh, that's what you mean. It's clogged. Uh, old school, you know, elbow grease. Go in there, delete. I would start with what are my priority clients. Because, you know, and then maybe even another way of doing it, Dean, would be to say, you know, anything before, you know, anything that's two years old, maybe it's time to, you know, trash that stuff. But it depends on what you have in there and what they've bought. So that's a tough question to answer. Uh, but I do know what. I would make sure that my tier one or tier two clients are always front and center. Make sure that data is always in there. So uh, Mia says Sunday. Can't do it Sunday, Mia. It's got to be a day of the week, man. Tuesday says Tim. Uh... I'll make time for a workshop. Just some notice. Uh, weekends would be clutch, though. Okay, so you're with me on this. You're like, you're like saying weekends as well, huh? 
Uh, it's happening in 2021. Man, 2021 is right around the corner, man. Uh, great insight, Ms. Tremendous uh, advice, Sheriff. Thank you, Victor. Hope uh, some new chapter of Sales After Dark. Great job done. Thank you, man. Uh, I don't have any final thoughts for tonight. Uh, I just wanted to share the email data because I think it's just interesting. If you send them during the week, send them midday. 12 to 3 o'clock seems to be like the sweet spot time, and I like that. Uh, but I, And then as far as Sunday, like I said, Sunday we've got, we've got a bunch. Of, it might be a long show on Sunday, by the way, just a warning. Uh, one of the things I will be doing is debating. To, uh, sales after dark will either be on Thursday or Sunday. I don't know which one, and I'm going to make it at 8 o'clock in the morning. My friends in India and Malaysia are not going to like this, but I'm going to make it one hour earlier. So it's going to be at 8 o'clock p.m. New York time, Eastern Standard Time. So again, my friends in India, you have to get up a little earlier, man. And so I apologize for that. And on that note, again, when you get an opportunity, check out the Sales Velocity Academy. Also, uh, what's this one right here? I appreciate your efforts. You're very welcome, man. Thank you, man. So check out the Sales Velocity Academy. You guys know the deal. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys on Sunday. Like I said, I got a lot. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be fun. I'm not gonna do a lot of content, but I will be giving out prizes, man. So there's gonna be some cool prizes. I mean, some expensive. One of the prizes I'll be giving out is what some people have been asking for these things. So I got. You're not gonna get this one, but. I know that some of you have had your eye on my pens. As you know, my hobby is making pens. And so I will be giving out some handmade custom pens by Victor Antonio. So I got a bunch of prizes coming for you guys. So uh, check out Sunday, Matt. It's going to be fun. Uh, come on Sunday, man. It's going to be fun. I'm, we're going to have some fun. Chris is putting some great production stuff together for me. And so we're just going to have fun. So... All I need you to do is be present if you have the time, have a nice little drink. Uh, if you're here in the U.S., it could be a nice alcoholic drink, anything you want. And if you're in India, uh, maybe some nice hot tea, uh, whatever it may be. And we will see you here on Sunday. Victor Antonio, always reminding you, Selenate Hard. We'll see you on Sunday for episode 